this might be a legend within the legend. Beer is best enjoyed in the shade of a chestnut tree. <laughs> they have very shallow root systems. <laughs> It's so insanely clean on the aroma. Unic lagers have a little bit more of that multi presence, which I really enjoy. Welcome back to Beer Brackets, everybody. We're continuing on with our Oktoberfest celebration. We just reviewed the Paul Lanner Doppelbach, the Salvator, and now we're moving on to their Munich <laughs> lager, the Munchner Hell. I love that name, the hell, look at that. And as it says on their website, and this is, you know how much we love our beer legends. This one actually says, according to legend, beer is best enjoyed in the shade of a chestnut tree. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So there you go. If you have a chestnut tree nearby, pick yourself up a Paul Anner Munich lager and enjoy it in the shade of that chestnut tree as per tradition. Yeah. Do, do, do you know, like, there's <laughs> this might be a legend within the legend, but there's a reason why they say that. <laughs> what, wait, you know the reason? I, I think. <laughs> I don't know what the reason is, but please tell me. I think I know. <laughs> let, let me tell you this uh, this little story, because I think please you're going to appreciate please, it. The chestnut like, so, story, please do. And I don't know if, you know, there, there might be, like, some different interpretation, but my understanding is that, like, you know, classic beer gardens, they were actually out in, 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 in a garden, like let's sort of speak, like, oh, and, and they, us going. they usually happened like uh, above the beer caves, which is where, yeah. like, you know, they would store their beer during the winter time, like, and et cetera. And chestnut trees used to grow above those caves, and chestnut trees have a very specific, two specific things that are important they have very shallow root systems. <laughs> <laughs> and very big leaves, which make like very good for shading. So that's why like people would go there like to hang out under them. I love that you're just pulling this material like out of nowhere too. It's not even like we discussed this beforehand. I love how you just have all this, de all these details about chestnut trees. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's amazing. I love it's, it. It's not me. It's the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. I I've never tried this one either. And of course, Paul Enner being one of the official breweries that are invited to pour, as they say, at the traditional Munich Oktoberfest celebrations. The Munich Lager is one of their main offerings that they do pour there. So when you're drinking a pint of Paul Enner Munich Lager, you're tasting traditional Oktoberfest. So what better way to celebrate, my friend? Let's open right. these up and let's get right into it. Let's, let's do this. Do it. Let's do it. Woo. Oh, no. That exploded. It's okay. It's ready. It wants to jump into the glass. It does. It's so desperate to jump into the glass. But now I got this really big oh, thing. Yes. I'm going to have to let settle a little bit here, but that's okay. Look at that. Hmm. Aroma cheers. Aroma, Aroma cheers, my friend. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. I, I don't know. Like this to me is just like a, as clean as a beer can possibly be, but at the same clean time, as it. packed as flavor as it possibly can be. Like it's, yes. it achieves the perfect balance of the two because you have yeah. everything in almost like a nanosecond. Like it just, you get the malt, you get the, you get the hops like very gently. They disappear quickly, leaving you, just to want more. Like, this is a three on three to me. Like it's it's Whoa. just like the way I imagine a, a lager. Like this yeah. is this is this to me so, is like the ideal. <laughs> I do want to point out right off the bat that you know you're we're comparing this when we're rating it. We're comparing against other lagers. Obviously, the Doppelbach that we just reviewed yes. has a much stronger aroma. This has a very mild sort of subtle aroma. 100%. So 100%. When you're yes. reviewing different styles of beers, you have to compare it against other beers in its category or else it just gets too crazy at that point because different beers, you know, the beer world is so vast it and is. diverse. <laughs> it's, I'm so excited to go in for a taste with this one because it's so insanely clean on the aroma. And you can even see like that light pillowy head that just forms on it there is just so inviting. 
Yeah. The aroma is perfect for what it needs to be. For a Munich lager like this, like there's the, the Hackers 4 that I really, really love. That's a go-to of mine that I think is very similar. So these Munich lagers, you see a lot of the same characteristics where they're meant to be very light, sessionable beers. Yeah. That you can drink in a giant stein if you wanted to. Exactly. Uh, but that also have some body and some taste to them. But they're very light. They're meant to be very subtle. It's, it's, it's malty enough that it's not too light. There's something there on the aroma. There's substance. I wouldn't go as high as a three as far as lagers go, but I think I'm going to go two on the aroma. I think a two is very fair. It's delicious. It's making me want to go for a sip, but it's not as strong in character as I would like out of a lager. Let's go in for the taste because I'm dying. I'm dying the taste this year, my friend. <laughs> Happy Oktoberfest. Happy Oktoberfest to you, my friend. Cheers. Prost. <laughs> mm. I love how you said, like, this is a type of beer that is really meant to be consumed in a big stein, like in a big glass. Like, because but it it's, is, right? It like, really is. Like, you you just, like, can't imagine taking, like, a tiny sip of this. No. Like, you've got to take, like, a, a substantial sip. <laughs> 100%. Like, you think the stereotypical scene from Oktoberfest, those giant beer steins, you know, beer pouring everywhere and people, like, drinking it down. This beer is made for that. It's meant to be yeah. sessioned. It's meant to be a beverage that you consume a lot of. So that's important to keep in mind. So what do you think about the taste? Well, so the taste, like I said, on the aroma, like what I like, I do have the perfect balance of the maltiness and the hops, like very gentle, just presented, mm -hmm. very clear, very clean. On very the taste, clean. it kind of like echoes yeah. that. Like you get you get that initial maltiness, r more roasted than most uh, lagers, or let's say a little bit more, than pilsners for sure you get a little bit more, more than presence, for sure yeah right like uh Absolutely. which you know a lot of the lagers that people might be familiar with like including me like that we usually find around like are tend to be more on the pilsner side right like mm -hmm. but on this one here the munich lagers have a little bit more of that multi-presence which i really enjoy they do uh, yeah but right when the malt finishes like it just transitions straight into the hops they're very clean crisp you get this herbaceous like uh notes herbaceous? like just to 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 finish uh uh yeah, yeah no I, I have to stick with the three here my friend like i really really enjoy like the way this like tastes like it's very simple very very simple but very well done what i do wonder you think? if it's because you're wearing your uh, trappist wizard shirt there that maybe you're a little bit more inclined to hand out perfect scores to our uh, our monk beer making friends here could be could be. It's delicious. I mean, it's, again, going back to what it is. This is meant to just be a tasty, really sessionable lager. Like maltiness, the hops are perfectly in balance. I like, like you said, it's a little bit maltier than your average, let's say, Pilsner, which is really nice. So it gives it a little bit more flavor, which is really present. That's why I love Munich lagers. Like I said, the Hackers 4 is one of my, like, go-tos for a nice, a nice, easy-drinking lager for that same reason. If I'm comparing it to other lagers, can I go as high as a 3 I don't think so, just because there's a little bit of a lack of character there, just a mm. little bit, like a little bit, it's muted, but it is a 2.5. I'll go as high as a 2.5. I'm reserving a three for something that's really like hitting the ball out of the park and really something unique that stands apart where it's like, wow. But now we get to the mouthfeel, my friend. You know what we got to do. Right. Gotta refresh, refresh your time. Up, yeah. Refresh your time. Look at that. What a beautifully brewed beer. Like Paul Anner is just, you know, they've been around for quite a long time for a reason they make good beer i've never had a paul enter beer that disappointed in any way shape or form no. i couldn't agree more my friend like they have perfected certain you know certain styles in a way that like only only time allows you to <laughs> yes time and many lent fasts yes definitely <laughs> <laughs> Definitely has, mm. has played a role in perfecting. It's played a role, <laughs> I'm sure. So incredibly delicious. Um, again, like here, like I really like all of the elements. Way more carbonated. Like if you've watched our, uh, you know, Doppelbach review, this clearly yeah. like has way more carbonation. Obviously, way more lighter in style, mm -hmm. uh, in, in body. Sorry, uh, but I would say still. Uh, and it might be just because of the, it's not on draft. Like, and we've recently had like some very good experiences, like, uh, you know, having yeah. laggers on draft, like poured like in a, uh, in, in, in a specific way. Like I wish like the carbonation was staying a little bit longer. 
I'm gonna stick with the 2.5, just again, like because of that. Like it's almost like it's missing a little bit of that extra foam yeah. to make it a little bit more light. But other than that, it's, you know, absolutely perfect. You know what I really appreciate about this beer? You know how when you have like some cheap mass produced lagers, there's that oiliness on the mouthfeel that you get. That is completely absent from this beer. It is painfully obvious the level of quality in this beer when you take a sip of it. So you might think like, oh, it's a little bit lacking in character in some ways, but at the same time, it's like what makes beers from these breweries special is the quality. And you can tell when you take a sip of this, it's refreshing, it's light, it's got a fluffy mouthfeel. There's no oily residue like you get when you're drinking like a cheap macro lager. It's fantastic. As far as lagers go, I think I'm going to go at 2.5. I'm going to, you know, again, I'll reserve a three for something that's really kind of unique and knocks it out of the park. But I think it's it's got to be a 2.5 because even though it's subtle in what it does, it does it perfectly. So finish. Mm -hmm. Finish is uh, is a tough one because sometimes I feel like with, uh, with lagers, finish is less is more in a sense. <sighs> hundred like percent. You, You're absolutely right. Less is more. Yeah. You don't, you don't want like certain flavors to, because they're so simple, you don't want them to overstay in yeah. a sense, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I do like how all of the elements that we described, like they disappear, like this, even the stickiness, like it's completely absent. It just like yeah. goes away. It just leaves you with this refreshing uh, lack of, uh, uh, of flavors. That just like, I want to have another sip. Like I, I can't wait to get back into the glass. Yeah. So the finish in a sense, it's, it has like just that enough maltiness, a little bit of bitterness, uh, but there's not like a lot. But I think that it, those elements are what are making this, an incredible beer because it just makes it incredibly sessionable. You, you know, you finish a big stein of that and you can't wait for the next one. I think I'm going to stick with the 2.5 because like there's, like you said, there's nothing that is incredibly wowing here, but it's done yeah. so well that it's it invites you back in the glass. And that I love that about a beer when it invites you back to take the second sip. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think I'm going to go with a two. Mm -hmm. um, just because with my lagers, for me personally, and this is completely subjective, I love a little bit more breadiness on the finish of my lagers. That's just me. Some people like it to be a little bit more hoppy. Some people like it to be a little bit more clean and crisp. I love a little bit more malty breadiness on my finish. And this, the finish really showcases the hops in this beer. You really get a nice bitter bite. And it's, it's subtle, like everything else to do with this. But you get a nice little bitter bite on the end with the hops. Um, but it's it's a little lacking in the maltiness for me. So I'm going to go with a two, I think. But now it's an overall beer experience, my friend. What do you think? Munich Lager. Outliner. That's a tough one. I think I'm going to stick with the 2.5 because it's, it's very well done. Mm -hmm. It has all of the elements. Like you said, like there's a couple of things that are... Uh, you know, personal preferences. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I do, I, I can see what you're saying there on the finish, like a little bit more on the maltiness. Uh, this leans a little bit more towards the hop. I, I think the carbonation for me is probably what like is taking it and which on draft might be completely different, but the carbonation yeah. is what is keeping it from getting that three on as an overall. What do you think, my friend? I think as an overall beer experience as a lager, if I was, I'm trying to picture myself like somewhere like in a traditional Munich Oktoberfest celebration area and being served a, a Stein of this uh, Munchner hell and just enjoying it from beginning to end because it's being so refreshing, having a really nice level of carbonation, a really light mouthfeel. And I just got to think as a, as a one-off beer experience, um, I'm going to go with a 2.5, even though it's lacking with certain characteristics that I'm looking for out of a lager, it's just oozing quality and it's, it's refreshing it's delicious. It's just as a one-off beer experience, which is what the overall measures. It's fantastic. So it's not quite a three, but a 2.5, I think is very fair. So calculating our final scores here for this delicious traditional Munich lager. Uh, for me, it came out to a 3.83, which in our rating system is an excellent beer. For Alessandro, he's enjoying this one. This came out a lot higher. Normally, sometimes I'll say it a little bit higher. For him, it comes out to a 4.5 on five, which is an outstanding 
year. And I don't blame you. You know what? Even though, like, subjectively, like I mentioned, I gave it slightly lower scores in some categories. As I said, this thing is oozing quality. It is just a delicious lager to drink this Oktoberfest. Thank you so much for joining everybody, joining us, everybody. I hope you enjoyed our little feature on Paul Anner here, our set of two reviews, exploring the brewery a little bit. Let us know down below. What's your favorite beer from Paul Anner? How do you feel about the Munich Hells? Let us know down below. And whatever you do, do not forget to close your Munich lager beer brackets. Never Open forget. With the close with a hacker for. Yeah. As long as you don't forget, you're fine. As long as you don't forget. Cheers, everybody.